Thank you. I appreciate the way you characterized the recent U.S. Supreme Court decision, Citizens United decision, that it not only protects the right of a corporation to spend money on behalf of or against a particular candidate, but also union money that could be spent on behalf of or against a particular political opponent. And as we know, the backbone of our economy is the small businesses, which is the vast majority of corporations in general are the people who have small businesses and work every day to pay taxes. It's not that they're trying to get something out of the government. It's more that, as we know as legislators, their message to us is always, would you please get off our backs? Would you stop taxing us so much? So now if the Supreme Court has said that they have this right to spend money in campaigns, then why are we even having this system at all? If all this money is being spent anyway, doesn't it defeat the entire purpose of this so-called clean election system? Well, I think we all get a little caught up in our own importance. I'm most guilty of that as anyone. But I think the Supreme Court ruling that you refer to was important because it finally sets free this notion that somehow people that work for a living, whether a corporation or a union, shouldn't be allowed unfettered access to demonstrate their free speech rights. I could care less if a union spends every nickel and dime for anyone in this room, but I want the corporations or a businessman to have that same opportunity, whether they're doing it in in-kind services with a phone bank or someone's law firm being used for telephones. As long as it's all reported, as long as we all know what's going on, that's all that really matters. And then people can decide. I think what we're doing now is we're constricting speech, and that's really where we are, and we're not promoting the kind of open competition that we need. Finally, I just have one last question, if I might. Are you familiar with – we haven't really talked about this today, but are you familiar that under the current law and this proposal, neither of these proposals changes this, that there are these so-called leadership PACs where the Speaker of the House and the Majority Leader, the President Pro Tem or the Majority Leader in the Senate or the two Minority Leaders, they have this right to collect hundreds of thousands of dollars and still spend that money in legislative races. So within this so-called clean election system, you have these leadership PACs that are able to still spend money in these legislative races. Don't you think that just defeats the whole idea of this system? Yeah. I mean, again, it's just another special exception for everybody except those who are special, and that's just another part of the law that was, again, contrived of ultimately the ultimate bill with very little input from the Republican side of the aisle, whether we would have supported it or not overwhelmingly is a matter of conjecture. But I think people are tired of the political class, of which I am part of, acting as if we can run elections from our perch. It's about people running elections. It's about people contributing to elections and putting their money and their time and their effort, whatever that is, for who they believe in. And, again, I come back to this issue of as long as the public knows who's with who, who's doing what on whose behalf, then they can look at it online in real time and make a judgment that this candidate is in the tank for this special interest and this candidate is in the tank for this interest, and what are you saying you're going to do as a legislature, and then I'm going to decide. So what are we all afraid of here is my point. 